Yeah, look, I think it's partially that, in that if you start assuming there's no real energy infrastructure hit, or even a nuclear plant, there is not much worry, I guess, about oil supplies in the near term, because the oil impact physically sits in either Hormuz or in Iran. So the selling off as you assume there's less energy disruption kind of makes sense. I would argue there is still a few dollars to go. If this really is a de-escalatory cycle, and let's say we're not going to see much of an impact further on, I think you could go back to the low 70s we saw before we saw the escalation in this crisis. So I think we're halfway, basically. I mean, you say the low 70s. Are so we already at just about $70 yeah. a barrel then for WTI? I think it's 74 odd for, for Brent crude or somewhere there. So you're saying early 70s then for Brent crude around 70, 71? Yeah, look, the way I look at it, when this, this conflict started to escalate recently, we were at that level. We were around 70, 71, something even 69. Sure, yeah. The risk premium, as I look at it, is, goes up to about $10. We saw it in April, and we saw it today as well. Um, and every other aspect of the market is probably bearish. Chinese stimulus wasn't great. Mm -hmm. We have demand worries. As you said in the introduction, all demand forecasts are going to get down, and people think it's going to be pretty significant glut in 2025. I wonder about that, that demand story though going down. And mm -hmm. I only say this because, one, you've now had these stimulus measures being put forward in China, which are aimed, yes, not necessarily at consumers always necessarily spending more, but it could raise demand by way of, of auxiliary measures and, and, and the like as well. Mm -hmm. Does that really push down demand in, in China, in a, in a market that is obviously very important uh, for, for, for oil? Mm. I think the problem is it doesn't push it up. So I think what the market okay. is pricing in is, I mean, the fact is the data so far out of China, for oil specifically, has been quite weak. So the demand has on a significant downtrend. Runs, refining runs might even be negative this year, yeah. might go down. So we need to see a significant step up. And I think the assessment so far is of the several packages is that there is clearly an intention to do something, but on the oil side of things, I think you need to see more consumer spending and we really need to get through the, um, the property slump. So if anything, it's probably a bit of a later um, uptick. And right now, I don't think the market is pricing in all that much of an upside from the latest stimulus mm. package. I think it's in a wait and see attitude. Mm. That's the downside. Let's talk about the upside a little bit here. Now, City had a bull case for oil hitting 120, but that was, of course, on increased concerns about supply uh, reductions due to growing conflict in the Middle East. Is that sentiment a little too far-fetched, hitting 120, even hitting 100 for that matter, mm. considering where we are now? Yeah, look, I think there's, for, in my mind, only one scenario. This can happen. Let's put it like that. Sure. It's low probability, high impact. But you really need to see significant constraints of oil flows through the Strait of Abus. If that happens, because there's so much oil just passing through on a daily basis there, mm -hmm. if you get a significant constraint there, what could happen is Asia could be short. Because a lot of these oil volumes go to Asia. They would need to bid for Atlantic Basin uh, cargoes and, and prices go up. In our high case, I go to about 120, but I really need to assume a pretty significant, long-lasting issue in flows through the Strait of Hormuz. Right now, I would still assess that as relatively low probability, yeah. because I don't think any player in, in the conflict has an incentive to push it all quite that far.